You think Antarctica is white, endless snow, wind, penguins suffering for our nature documentaries, but that's a lie made of ice. Strip away the frozen armor, peel off four kilometers of ancient glacier, and a different world rises. Antarctica isn't a frozen void. It's Earth's most hidden landmass, erased by cold, waiting to be remembered. This is Antarctica unmasked, raw rock, black basins, river ghosts, fire sleeping under frost. Welcome to the South you were never meant to see. One. Antarctica is not one continent, it's two. The first truth under the ice? Antarctica is not a solid kingdom, it's two lands pretending to be one. East Antarctica, a gigantic ancient shield. West Antarctica, a patchwork of volcanic fragments and drowned crust. They do not match, they do not belong together. East is old stone arrogance, a survivor from when Gondwana ruled the world. It has been here for over a billion years, resisting time, holding secrets older than trees, older than animals, older than most fossils. West is chaotic geology, born from rift systems and volcanic birth pains, land stitched together by accidents of plate tectonics. It didn't form in one piece. It was assembled like scrap armor. Remove the ice and the division becomes visible. Two landmasses separated by fractures and drowned valleys, tied by nothing but frozen water. Wait, a continent in disguise, a continent in conflict. 2. Without ice, the coastline isn't smooth, it shreds into chaos. You've seen maps, a smooth white oval at the bottom of the world. Wrong. That outline is ice, not land. Strip it off and the edges collapse into fjords deeper than Norway's, fractured gulfs splitting land like shattered glass, knife-edged peninsulas jutting into the sea, drowned shelves plunging beneath the Antarctic Ocean. Antarctica becomes ragged, violent coastline, like someone tore the continent out of Earth with claws. The smooth border we see today? That's the illusion of ice, a white blanket hiding jagged geology. Without that blanket, the continent looks wounded, like Earth's crust cracked here and tried to hide the scar under snow. The true edge of Antarctica is broken, drowned, and sharp. 3. A giant rift tears through the continent. Imagine a scar running deep across the continent, not visible from satellites, not mapped until the modern era. The West Antarctic Rift System, one of the largest rift systems on Earth, stretches over 3,500 kilometers, rivaling the Great African Rift. It is a tear in the planet, a place where Earth's crust tried to split Antarctica in two, but ice suppressed the break, like a weight holding a wound closed. Under the ice, the rift holds. Faults and fractures, sunken crust blocks, basins ready to flood the moment ice leaves, volcanic systems frozen in time. Antarctica is actively trying to pull itself apart, just very slowly, because ice wins the arm wrestle for now. 4. The Transantarctic Mountains Rival the Rockies There's a myth that Antarctica is flat under the ice, as if it hides nothing but smooth loneliness. Wrong again. Stretching across 3,500 kilometers, longer than the Rockies, longer than the Alps, lie the Transantarctic Mountains, a range so massive it cuts the continent like a spine made of stone. Some peaks push above the ice, most drown beneath it, secret summits buried under white silence. This isn't a small ridge, it's one of Earth's great mountain systems, older than the Himalayas, shaped by ancient continental collisions, volcanic uplift, and erosion frozen in place. Expose the bedrock, and suddenly Antarctica shows its true skeleton. Jagged ridges, colossal valleys, and volcanic sculpted peaks standing defiantly where ice once drowned them. 5. East Antarctica is a shield, a billion-year-old fortress of rock. East Antarctica is ancient, not old like pyramids. Old like the idea of pyramids didn't exist yet because multicellular life hadn't evolved. It is a craton, the hard inner core of a continent forged by heat and pressure long before animals crawled from oceans. Granite, nice, metamorphic rock older than imagination. If continents were warriors, East Antarctica is the one wearing armor from a forgotten war, unbroken, unmoving, carved by time, but never defeated. While ice covers it today, the land beneath is thick, stable, immovable, 
a foundation that helped anchor supercontinents. Gondwana rose around it. Continents broke and drifted while East Antarctica didn't flinch. 6. West Antarctica is an archipelago without ice, not a continent. Now flip to the other side. West Antarctica cannot survive without its ice throne. Peel the ice away, and the land sinks, not metaphorically literally. Most of it lies below sea level, a sunken jigsaw of crust blocks and volcanic fragments. It would not stand as a continent. It would collapse into a chain of islands scattered across a shallow polar sea. Volcanic peaks become islands. Low basins become ocean floor. Fjords flood. Valleys drown under dark water. Without ice, West Antarctica looks less like a continent and more like Patagonia, drowned by the Pacific. It is fragile land pretending to be mighty, held together not by geology, but by four kilometers of ancient frozen weight pressing it into stability. Lift the ice, and West Antarctica dissolves into water. One continent? No. One continent and one broken archipelago, only united by cold. 7. Antarctica holds one of the deepest canyons on Earth. Hidden beneath Princess Elizabeth Land, lies a trench deeper than the Grand Canyon, a silent abyss stretching through the bones of the continent. It isn't a crack, it's a wound carved by ancient rivers when Antarctica still knew warmth, sunlight, and flowing water. Imagine torrents racing through stone, valleys echoing with liquid life, long before glaciers turned breath into frost and silence into law. Then cold rose like an empire, ice marched forward, burying the river kingdom under crushing weight, sealing it away where no human eye would ever wander. For millions of years it has waited, a colossal valley imprisoned in darkness, forgotten until radar pierced the silence and exposed its story. Not carved by glaciers, not shaped by winter, this canyon was born in a living world, drowned only when the planet exhaled and froze a continent. A reminder, Antarctica wasn't always a tomb. It remembers motion, it remembers water, it remembers life. 8. Without ice, Antarctica would rise from the sea. Right now, Antarctica is crushed. Ice weighs more than 27 million gigatons, enough to deform the lithosphere, pushing the land down like a thumb on a sponge. Take away the ice, and the continent rebounds, slowly, like a world taking its first deep breath in 34 million years. This process is called isostatic rebound. It's not poetic imagination, it's geophysics. Land lifts upward, basins rise, coastlines shift, mountains grow taller by inches at first, then meters over millennia. The last time ice melted like this, after the last ice age, Scandinavia rose 300 meters. Antarctica would do the same but faster. Imagine mountains climbing skyward, valleys turning into lakes, coastlines redrawn every generation. Antarctica is not static. It is compressed potential waiting to snap upward into a new shape. 9. A hidden volcanic empire lies beneath the ice. Under Antarctica, there is fire, not emptiness. More than 138 volcanoes sit beneath the continent, one of the largest volcanic systems on Earth. Most are dormant, some are still active. Several show heat signals through the ice, proving magma is still moving below. If the ice weren't hiding them, you'd see shield volcanoes forming black volcanic peaks, basalt cliffs and old lava plains, frozen eruption cones and ash fields, hot springs and geothermal lakes in volcanic basins. Antarctica isn't just frozen rock, it's a massive volcanic province buried under ice, quietly heating and shaping the land from below. 10. Antarctica was once green and it remembers. Buried under ice are fossil forests, petrified trunks, leaves frozen in time, Pollen grains trapped like whispers of a world long dead. Antarctica once hosted rainforests, not tundra. Lush, dense, vibrant ecosystems during the warm Cretaceous and earlier when dinosaurs walked Earth and Antarctica sat closer to the equator. There were rivers, fern valleys, tree ferns, moss mats, and conifer forests stretching to the horizon. Researchers have found roots, wood, Cell structures perfectly preserved by cold. Evidence of seasons. Trees with annual growth rings wider than modern pines. Not instantly. Nature doesn't work like Netflix buffering. But soil exists. Riverbeds exist. Organic material sleeps beneath permafrost. 11. Hidden rivers once cut this land and could again. Before Antarctica froze, rivers shaped it. We know because the ground beneath the ice is cut by deep erosion valleys wide, winding river channels, basin systems and drainage networks. And even today, water still moves under the ice. 
flowing through subglacial tunnels and feeding hidden lakes. One underground river may stretch nearly 1,000 kilometers, making it one of the longest concealed river systems on Earth. If this landscape were exposed, those ancient river paths would fill again, lakes would reconnect, and sediment would build new coastlines. Antarctica wouldn't just be rock, it would become a flowing, water-carved continent again, with river systems older than human civilization. 12. The dry valleys would rule the landscape, a Mars on Earth. Antarctica already has one ice-free region, the McMurdo Dry Valleys. They're so cold and dry that ice can't survive there. Wind, salt, and frozen air strip the ground completely bare. No plants, almost no soil life, just hardy microbes, just rock, dust, and ancient lake beds. Scientists study this place because it's the closest Earth comes to Mars-like terrain. Now scale that up. If ice retreated across the continent, more valleys like this would appear. Polar desert plains, red-brown mountain slopes instead of snow, salt lakes in thin, freezing sunlight, frozen ground thawing and releasing trapped microbes. Antarctica's future landscape wouldn't all be green or full of water. Some regions would stay dry, sterile, and silent, forming the coldest desert belt on the planet. Even after ice leaves, these places would resist life, empty rock outliving everything else. 13. The Wilkes Basin, a flooded inland sea in waiting. Under East Antarctica sits the Wilkes Basin, a giant depression more than 1,400 kilometers wide and deep enough to bury mountain ranges. It currently holds ice thicker than the Himalayas. Exposed in a future ice-free state, this basin would not remain land. It would fill with water and form a massive inland sea, ringed by high ridges and mountains, and cut by new channels and straits. Instead of a single continuous landmass, this region becomes a polar archipelago, similar to the Canadian Arctic, islands, waterways, deep basins, and newly formed coastlines. 14. A coastline reborn, savage and alive. Today, Antarctica's edge is a sterile glacier wall. Cold currents slam into new newborn coasts. Winds roar across naked rock. Waves bite into raw sediment, carving fast, carving deep. Antarctica's new coastline would be the most dramatic on Earth, not gentle slopes, but jaws of stone and water. Penguins would lose ice, but gain land. Seals would trade flows for rocky beaches. Storm petrels would own the cliffs. And humans, we would look with awe and calculation, because a coast like this draws ships, curiosity, ambition. History shows that every new frontier invites explorers and trouble. Antarctica without ice becomes the last great coastline, a frontier raw and dangerous. 15. Without ice, Antarctica rewrites maps and destiny. Melt the ice and the world changes. Sea levels rise approximately 58 meters globally. Cities vanish. New York, Shanghai, Mumbai, London, Miami, Dhaka, Sydney. Gone beneath the warm tide. Ocean currents shift. Climate belts migrate. Jet streams break and reform, Earth breathes differently, and at the bottom of the world, a land once hidden becomes a divided double continent, with a spine of mountains, a drowned archipelago, a volcanic heart, ancient river systems revived, Mars-like deserts expanding, rising basalt peaks, deep inland seas forming, forests dreaming in soil once frozen, storm-born coastlines cutting stone, not white, not blank, a raw planet beneath a mask, a continent not frozen, but waiting, waiting for heat, waiting for time, waiting to be seen, not as ice but as land. Antarctica is not absence, it is a possibility, a continent swallowed by winter, holding a world we have never walked on, and humanity will face a question older than maps when the last hidden world appears. What will we do with it?